Well, hi guys, it's that time. It's our Bible teaching snippet of the day. Let me just start here and say this. I want to thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak into your life by doing these short teaching snippets. I consider it an honor that I get to represent my father and that I get to speak positive good things into your life that hopefully will make you more successful right here on this earth and the nasty now and now. Okay, so we've been talking in our little word series about our words that we speak over ourselves, the words that we speak over other people, the words that people speak over us that we take an identity from. We've talked about making better choices, maybe better movies, uh, music, things we read, better friends. Your friends will ruin you, man. I know this. I'm 55, okay? Uh, and we talked about even doing positive confessions to speak out loud what we want in the mirror and make our life, say the words, and make our life path follow our words. And then I talked about stopping in the middle of the day, complaining and grumbling and mumbling all the time. Did you know God left the uh, Israelites in the desert for 40 years because he couldn't deal with their mumbling and grumbling anymore? Okay. Anyway, so in the middle of the day, stop talking all the negative junk. I'm going to tell you what I tell my teenagers. Zip it, lock it, take it out here, and drop it. That means don't talk about that no more. So let's stop mumbling and grumbling and start speaking what we want. Today, I'm going to stay kind of in the words idea of what we're doing, but I want to wander off into something that I really think will bless you and help you live a better life. I'm going to go over here, and I'm going to use uh, Jesus as an example, but uh, let me say this, really. I, I, I feel like I need to say this. Did you know the church doesn't teach us that Jesus is our role model? Okay, the Bible says that we should be imitators of God. Okay, we know what Jesus was like if we study his life, and then we can imitate him and see what he was like, okay? You can't be like something that you don't study and don't know about. The Bible says that Jesus was the exact image and likeness of the Father. So what we have is God's character and nature coming into the flesh as a man to show us what we're supposed to be like. Two things I want to wander off on. Number one, we have not had a good role model okay, since Adam fell in the garden. Since he ate the forbidden fruit and rebelled against God, we have not had a godly role model. Jesus came in the flesh to show us that godly role model. Jesus did not come just to save you from going to hell. If that was the case, Jesus could have died for our sins when he was just barely big enough to hang on a cross so that part of scripture could be fulfilled because it was predicted that he would be hung on a cross. But Jesus did not come here for that one and only purpose so you don't go to hell. Okay, watch this. See that little guy right there? That is not why Jesus died. Jesus did not die so you have some fire insurance to keep you from going to hell. Jesus came to show you who you're supposed to be, a human who has God's character and nature. Did you know that they could have arrested Jesus at the age of 12 in the temple and nailed him to a cross and the redemption part would have been met? But he stayed here for a lifetime on the earth walking as a man so he could show us what we're supposed to be like. Okay, so now that I've studied the life of Jesus because I understand I'm supposed to be like him, I start seeing myself doing things that Jesus did in Scripture. When I read where Jesus called Lazarus out of the tomb, I just pictured myself standing at the tomb and doing exactly what Jesus did. It says in Scripture that Jesus screamed, Lazarus, you come out. So I'm just sitting there imagining me doing that. And that's what I want to talk to you about. Did you know in the Old Testament, the word imagination is the same word as conception? We can imagine things 
and put them in the womb of our mind and they will give birth to the things that we think about and what we imagine. And here I'm going to take you over to the verse that I want to talk to you about. I'm in Mark chapter 6 verse 41 and it says Jesus took the five loaves and the two fish and looking up to heaven he thanked God for and blessed the food. He divided it and broke it and gave the bread to the disciples for them to give to the people. And when he divide, and then he divided the fish among them also. Okay, I want to take you up to the word looking up to heaven. That word looking up to heaven is to look at again, to see twice or to imagine and see a vision of. Jesus saw that multiplying, both that bread and fish, he envisioned it multiplying, and that was part of the making the miracle happen, was that Jesus could think and imagine that happening. Now, I'm going to take you to one more scripture today because I, I want to connect this for you. I'm over here in Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20. Now, watch this. Glory be to God who can do much, much more than anything we can ask or imagine through his power working in us. The Bible just said that God can make happen much, much more, not just what you think or ask, but much, much more than you can ever imagine. So set your good imagination into motion. Stop thinking about all these negative, horrible junk. Get the junk out and start thinking of good things. Think of great things. Use your imagination to make things happen in your life. Well, God bless you guys. And I know I packed a lot in today because I missed you from yesterday. But I'll see you again right here on Facebook. Bye-bye.